Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about black body radiation. This is a way to describe how warm objects give off light. For example, we're going to have some math that can describe how a hot tire from friction gives off heat and gives off infrared light to the surrounding area. It's not something you can see with your naked eye, but with, say, an infrared camera, which is what this is, there's like an infrared camera turning on and off, you can see that heat coming off. That's light. Same reason that night vision goggles work. When, you know, looking through night vision goggles, you can see people even if it's completely dark out because your skin is warm. Your skin is like 90 degrees. That's warm enough to give off a good amount of infrared light. Uh, it's beyond the visible wavelength, but you put on those night vision goggles and you realize that you are a flashlight beaming light out of your face into the space around you. It's just invisible to the naked eye. So there's two equations that describe all of this. The first one is called the Stefan Boltzmann Law. So again, we know that anything that has a temperature, which is like everything, gives off heat through radiation. It transfers energy in light. Uh, remember, light is a form of radiation, electromagnetic radiation, but that just means light, any kind of EM wave. So the law tells us about the rate at which energy gets transferred, which should be very exciting for you because that's the most important like quantity in physics when we talk about the rate of energy anything. Rate and energy together means power. And if, remember, if there's only one thing you remember in all of IB physics, make it that. The rate of energy is power. We're talking about joules per second. So how quickly that energy gets given off to the space around is given by this law. And here you go. So that's the equation. It's a data booklet equation. We're going to break down what each variable is. But this is the Stefan Boltzmann law in your data booklet. So here you are, P of course is power, so it must be measured in watts. A watt is a joule per second, the number one absolute most important unit for you to be very, very comfortable with is the watt. So P is about the power, it's how much power gets radiated by an object of a certain temperature and some other stuff. That other stuff would be the sigma here is a constant, that's a constant that's in the front of your data booklet. It's got crazy units to make the math work out. But that's what it is. You just, that's always that number. All right, so it's just a constant. Uh, a is the surface area of the object. Um, so depending on the object, a lot of times we'll be doing things with like stars and planets um, or other things. So a lot of times you'll have to do like the surface area of a sphere, uh, which is in the front of your data booklet if you don't have that memorized. But is the surface area of the object you can imagine maybe a big thing that's hot will give off a lot more energy than a small thing that's hot. And T is the temperature of the object. That should definitely make sense too. The higher the temperature of the object, the more energy it's going to give out in the form of light. And notice a fourth power here. This is temperature to the fourth power. You're not going to see this like anywhere else in the data book. That's ridiculous. A fourth power relationship it super depends on temperature if you have an object if you could double its temperature the power would go up by two to the fourth power which is 16 times so doubling the temperature would make it give off 16 times more energy uh it's nuts now remember that's kelvin so it, i mean it's not an easy thing to double the temperature of something in kelvin but uh it's a very 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 strong relationship all right, and little e is not like 2.7, blah, blah, blah. It's not the math little e. It's its own thing. It's a uh, unitless quantity called emissivity, and we're going to talk about what that is. So emissivity is a, is a new thing that we're going to talk about in a second. But try and picture why those others make sense, why you know a, a big thing versus a small thing. Um, you know, This is why you can like put out the wick of a candle with your fingertips if you've ever done that. It's super easy, and it's not a problem at all. The candle's very hot. The wick is very hot. It's a very high temperature. It's so hot that it's giving off visible light. But it's got such a tiny little surface area that is really not that powerful, and you can very easily just squish it between your fingers. The flame goes out. Your fingers are totally fine. 
Okay, but let's talk about emissivity. Emissivity, it's a unitless number, and it's always going to be between 0 and 1. It's a roundabout way for us to measure how effectively something can emit or absorb light. Um, because it turns out not every uh, object of a certain size at a certain temperature emits the same exact amount of power. There's some different things that depend on it, and we'll look at it. So there's a range. It'll always range between 0 and 1. So little e is always a number between 0 and 1. And to be honest, when you're doing math with this, it's often going to be 1 because we're just going to assume these things are perfect emitters of radiation. So the most classic example that you're probably familiar with is um, this works for absorbing too. And absorbing is, uh, is a good one to think about conceptually because uh, you've probably noticed um, wearing a, a black t-shirt versus a white t-shirt outside on a hot day. You know, a black shirt will absorb a lot of that energy. It's, it's very hot because the, the uh, black fabric absorbs all of the EM radiation, all of the light coming in. Whereas uh, white, I mean, the quote color white is just all of the all light frequencies together. So a white t-shirt reflects pretty much all of the incoming light. So it really doesn't heat up very much, whereas a uh, black shirt absorbs pretty much all of the incoming light, so it gets much warmer. So it really does have to do kind of with color, and color is based on the material that it's made of. Uh, so uh, we use these interchangeably, emitting and absorbing, because it, it works both ways. If something is like a black t-shirt, it's a very good absorber of light. It turns out it's also a very good emitter of light. If you could get your t-shirt up to like a couple thousand degrees and it didn't just combust, it would be very good at emitting light. Here's a couple pictures from Cognity that I think are really good. Um, same idea, if you have you know a water bottle or here they have cans of water, um, this is like a shiny silvered surface or like a, almost like a mirrored surface or something where this was like you could paint like with a matte black surface, this would get a lot hotter. It would warm up a lot more because that surface would absorb a lot more of the sunlight and this would reflect it off. So this would have a very high emissivity. This would have a very low emissivity. Here's another example, something shiny with a very low emissivity. Um, you know, you could imagine a situation where all of it is reflected and so you wouldn't really absorb anything. The idea with a black body object is it doesn't reflect anything. What it does is it absorbs it and then sends it back out. There's kind of an equilibrium here of energy. Right? It's not like uh, your, your t-shirt right, does hit some kind of equilibrium. It'll get warm. It'll get hot. But it's not like if you stood out in the sun all day, your t-shirt would suddenly catch on fire. That's because it is also emitting radiation all the time. So we define a black body object as a perfect emitter of radiation. And that's what we're talking about. So it's an ideal, quote, object or surface that has an emissivity of one. A lot of stuff, especially when we're talking about astro, but a lot of stuff we per model as perfect black bodies, even if they're only kind of close, but it's, they're really very close to one, even, you know, when we experimentally measure this stuff. So a lot of times, problem-wise, you're going to be fine to put in one for emissivity unless they tell you otherwise. And that's where we're going to leave it for now. There's one more equation that we will do in an upcoming uh, session or video. But for now, uh, you should have what you need for some of the ideas in the Stefan Boltzmann law and how quickly the power, the rate at which an object giving off light will do it. So you have some stuff that you can practice and try it out and make sure that's making sense. Uh, make sure you jot down any questions you got and we will talk about them together. So go on, try it out, and have fun.